Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Private Investigator Advice, and this is another tech-related video-only podcast for you guys that follow the Private Investigator Advice uh, website video thing. Anyways, I'm glad you could join us today. Uh, this episode is going to be brought to you by PI Advice. PI Advice is selling uh, three different templates. I actually bundled them up for you to make it less expensive. Um, and in that bundle, you get the intake sheet to get information from your client and uh, not only uh, about them, but the case itself. Um, also, there's the retainer agreement to make sure that everybody understands what's going to take place, uh, how much is going to be you know, charged, um, uh, what everybody's responsible for, the investigator and the client. Um, and, it, you know, hopefully it protects you a little bit as an investigator and it should protect the client as well. Uh, and also we have the surveillance template, one of my favorite things, because that's probably something I've looked at the most in my career is a surveillance template. So not only do you get the, uh, the template, which is already formatted, um, I, uh, provide an example report in that same format and uh, also a little video walkthrough to make sure you know how to, you know, what, you know, I can verbally tell you where everything is and what, what, what goes where and why, and make sure you can, you know, add pictures to it. So you, uh, in case you haven't done that before in a Word document, you're able to do that. And, you know, if you don't like the format of the, of the surveillance template, you can always adjust it and change it to fit your needs. Uh, anyways, uh, if you would, I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, link to that in the, the, the notes of this uh, YouTube video. Uh, I will also, um, you can also go to PI Advice Net and, and there's always, you know, on the sidebar there, there's uh, links to that as well. All right, guys. So this week, um, there was a lot of great news and I wasn't going to talk about all of it uh, as it related to tech, uh, but I found some cool things that you guys might be interested in. Uh, one of the things that was shared uh, was, and, and I know this has kind of been around, but I just happened to catch an article from the, uh, the Daily Dot, I think because they're, they're promoting it for some reason. But anyways, it's called One Password for All Passwords with the Password Boss Password Manager app. A lot of password words in there. Anyways, so uh, this is an app uh, that you can, I guess, uh, load up onto three different devices. Um, and what it does is, is it generates a 20-character password for you uh, that it will uh, generate uh, on those specific websites where you need um, your password. Um, and, uh, just to make sure that, you know, you're even got some extra security, they even offer, uh, a situation where you can set up two factor authentic, authentic, authentication, almost uh, authentication. That doesn't, that isn't even a word, is it? Anyways, um, I did just kind of do my due diligence. I, I, you know, I wanted to make you aware that there is such a thing out there and there's probably some other apps that, that do that as well. Um, but, um, I looked at the app review in Android and it wasn't that great. Um, and that may be because they've just, you know, maybe early on in the app creation, um, it just wasn't doing well. I'm not quite sure, but you can definitely check it out. Uh, I did notice that the, the Daily Dot was offering a coupon uh, for $19.99 for that app for lifetime access to this app manager. Anyways, um, I'm going to have the links to that uh, in the article and I'll put the links to it in the video as well uh, down below. Uh, okay, so the next one that I thought was really interesting, and it was making uh, news everywhere, it was Google makes it harder to steal images from Google Images. Though, once I tell you, I really don't think that title is uh, appropriate. That That's a title that I read somewhere or, or something to that effect. And uh, so anyways, um, so Google recently made some changes to Google Images um, that's supposed to, to have a positive effect on like uh, for copyright or copyright infringement rather. Um, and so, uh, what, what happened was, was that, um, when you would, when you Google, let's say, let's say you Google search me, my name, right. And you could go to, uh, you know, I might have articles or whatever, if you just Googled the web, but if you click on the images tab, it would bring up, you'd see a few pictures of me. And so, uh, there used to be an option where you could view image and it would, uh, it's been a while since I've done it. So I was kind of like, I wanted to see how it was. I had to look at some other pages, but basically it would make the picture bigger. It was high resolution. It was whatever the, the, probably the, the actual photo was right. The resolution of that photo. And so, um, uh, what they did was they took away that button. They took away the view picture, button. you can still see the picture, but it's not big. It's, it's a little bit smaller. Um, and so uh, I don't even know, honestly, how, 
how this is going to help. But let me let me continue. Um, so, anyways, uh, that was happening, and uh, you know, they they decided to make these changes all of a sudden, and and I I was like, well, why why now? Why in why you know what what forced their hand to kind of have this agreement with with uh, well they ended up having some agreement with Getty Images um, and so anyways um, and I'll put links to this it'll be in the article you can definitely click on that as well um, so basically uh, Getty Images uh, filed a complaint against Google in 2016 I didn't know this but this is what happened so all, this is what they said on their own site so I'm going to be quoting this uh, what they said. Uh, Getty Images complaint focused specifically on the changes made in 2013 to Google Images, the image search functionality of Google, which uh, has not only impacted Getty Images uh, image licensing business, but content creators around the world by creating captivating galleries of high resolution content, uh, copyrighted content. So basically they sold you photos that were, you know, people would take photos, they'd be on the website and you sell you know, I guess licenses to use that. Uh, anyways, back to the quote. Uh, because image consumption is immediate, once an image is displayed in a high resolution, large format, there is little uh, impetus to view the image on the original source site. These images have allowed Google to reinforce its role as the Internet's dominant search engine, maintaining monopoly over site traffic, engagement data, and advertising spend. That's how it was written. Uh, this also promotes piracy, resulting in widespread copyright infringement, turning users into accidental pirates. Um, anyways, only time will tell. Uh, this is what they said. Only time will tell. If, um, it, well, no, this is what I'm saying. Only time will tell if this is actually going to make a difference. Uh, personally, um, uh, you know, when I look at photos on, on the Internet of whoever, whatever, I I don't really I mean unless uh, you know the resolution is horrible like I don't care like is that the photo great like I'm not trying to steal some artwork uh, of a photo you know like uh, and I'm worried about the resolution like that doesn't matter to me personally maybe it does to you so how does this apply to investigators well um, this really gives me an opportunity to remind you as investigators or internet users. Um, that uh, when you take an image and you put it on your website or something like that, which there's a lot of private investigators out there that do this and they just maybe don't know any better. So if you're listening to this now, you will. If you use that image, no matter where you found it, without the permission of the owner of that, of that um, picture, it's copyright infringement. And let me tell you, like, it's a big deal when you get contacted by a lawyer and they're like, hey, you use this without our permission, give us money. And if you don't think that happens, go ahead and use those photos because it does, I can assure you. Anyways, um, anyways, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, if if uh, if you think it's not, it is. Uh, it, uh, you just never want to use um, photos that you, like, so I, you know, that you just take from the internet onto your website, not for a blog post, not for like artwork for your, your, your website, uh, you know, no, nothing. So let me, so let me get past that now. So you know that that's, that's, that's what you shouldn't do, but let me tell you. So there is places you can go to. It's where these are some of the places that I go to. So one of the places I go to is freeimages.com. And, um, it's like, uh, that website is a mix of actual paid content and free content. So you can find pictures that are free and usually all you have to do is just like source, source the photo. So where did you find it? So that's specifically what they ask you to do. This is, and I, you know, it'll be like, uh, Joe Evans photograph on free images, you know, whatever. And you just put that below the photo. This is where you got it. This is where you found it. And that's all they ask for using those photos. And some, you can find some really decent photos. Some, some are like, uh, there's just not a great selection of a certain uh, thing you're looking for. But I also, and I've been using this for years and years and years now, uh, I use pond5.com. Um, and basically, you can, you know, search for images that you want um, for whatever, your, your, your website or your article that you're writing for your website or something. And um, you, I, I buy, I mean, they have different resolutions, different sizes. And I just usually get the smallest size and I, you know, maybe get it for 2 or $3 dollars. And then I use it for my website. I'm not reselling it or anything like that. I'm just using it for, you know, uh, to add some beauty to my articles or whatever. Um, anyways, again, I'll have links links to those things in the uh, in the article. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it, just just take it from me. Um, if you want to not get sued, or you know, I would be I would rather pay the three dollars for the photo on Pond Five than to get a letter and stress out from some attorney because they're trying to to get money from you. Okay. Anyways, all right. So let's go on to the next one. So this week I had the opportunity to fo- uh, to review a. Uh, it's actually in this little case right here uh, of the Focus Power F10 Mini Bluetooth earbud. Now, um, uh, I was kind of fascinated. I've seen these for a while, actually, and uh, I've just never got around to picking one up. And um, I just wanted to try it out. Uh, so I, I bought this with my own money. Uh, I didn't, you know, no one's asked me to review this. Uh, but I, but I thought this was, uh, <laughs> if you're watching the video, it's in my hand right here. It's just this little earbud, and it just pokes in your ear here. And... You can just like you know headphones that you know have a microphone. This has a microphone. Um, you know you can listen to music. You can listen to whatever on your phone. Whatever you're listening to, it, Bluetooth connected. And um, I'm, I'm not going to give you the whole review here. I'd like you to go check out the actual review. Uh, I still got to make a, a review video for it, but I did put the written review in there. Um, definitely worth checking out. Uh, very affordable, uh, and it doesn't come out of your ear. Um, I, I'm using it every day for like the past. I don't know, since I, since I posted that review, I did, literally didn't open it until I was ready to review it. And uh, I'm really glad I got a chance to review it because now I can use it. So definitely check that out. I'll put a link to that in the, uh, uh, in the, in the notes and, uh, and also in the article. So the last one I have for you today is um, L.L. Bean. Um, uh, the only way I know L.L. Bean, I know that I think they sell clothes and stuff like that. I, I think we, the first time I was introduced to them, like my wife got a L.L. Bean bag or something, not, uh, not bean bag, but a bag. Uh, anyways, um, so they, they've been around for, for a while. And, um, so, so I read in an article that they're, they're going to start tracking clothing. Um, and I, 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 my first thing, like usually, uh, when I talk about this, I, I explain it and then I give my opinion, but this is probably the stupidest decision and whoever actually decided this should probably be fired, uh, because I think it's going to have some negative ramifications, uh, from, uh, their clients. But anyways, uh, I'll read the story to you anyways. Uh, so they've decided to sew in sensors. Um, and I don't know the technology behind this, but, uh, into like boots, and coats uh, so they can track clothing after it leaves the store through this thing called Ethereum blockchain. And I, I would really love to explain blockchain to you, but instead I'll link to it in the article so you can um, wreck your brain around it. Um, I, I, I can relate it to Bitcoin. Um, I may be in the security of it all. But anyways, so the, the Wall Street Journal reported uh, that the tests um, for, uh, for doing this, for sewing it in clothes will begin in 2018, uh, this year with, uh, individuals who opt into the program. Uh, so the, where I found this was through, uh, the media post, the uh, articles through media, the media post, they believe that it, uh, um, there, the, even though there's going to be customers that are going to opt into this, it doesn't mean that maybe that the, that the people who don't still won't have the sensors in their clothes, which is some concerns. Like as if LL Bean's not going to go. Okay, well this this bit of clothing here is for you know the sensors, and and then and then we'll have this different pile over here that without the sensors. They believe that they're they're probably going to have just everything have sensors, and we're only going to attract the people who opt in. That's that's kind of what they think is going to happen. So, anyways, they they the, the you know the reason that Ella Beans saying okay, well, we want to we want to track this clothing clothing is, is they want to see uh, when it's worn, uh, how you know how it relates to the weather, um, how many times they wash it, things like that. Uh, sensors could potentially check uh, um, uh, track steps uh, and other data that you know we don't really know about at this point. Um, anyways, um, apparently you know, this kind of thing isn't uh, a, a first. Uh, apparently, uh, Levi Strauss, you know, Levi's, um, they, and, and I found some articles that go way back, they used RFID um, to, uh, tags to track their clothing, but, it, but they basically tracked it within their company, like shipping and, you know, the store, but it never left the store. Like you, nobody was, that, that stuff was not tracked after it left the store. Um, so anyways, uh, I guess we'll see how it works out for them. Um, uh, I, I just think that that kind of thing, um, you know, 
how do I put this? I, you know, I always think like th- th- there's this thing that happens with technology. It's like, you know, you want to pursue better technology. That's always going to be a thing, but there's always going to be, a, in my opinion, like there's going to be a misuse eventually for that technology. And um, so, so there's going to be these sensors in these clothes. And I, I think this is the type of thing that could be abused. Um, I don't even know how great this technology is for this, but it, it could be abused. And I, I, I just think it's one of those things where we need to be really careful when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, I think tracking clothing for the reasons that they're doing is absolutely absurd. Uh, people are going to wear jackets when it's cold. Um, people are going to wash their clothes when it's dirty. Like, uh, I don't think you need a sensor to figure that out. So, uh, anyways, um, yeah, I actually hope, personally, I hope this fails miserably. And I hope, you know, they pay dearly for a, a really silly thing they're about to go do. But, uh, who knows? Who knows? That's just my opinion. All right, guys. So that is your tech information for the day or for the week. Um, I'll have some more stuff for you next week. I thought this was fascinating stuff. Um, and so I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and uh, I guess I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.